On the 13th June 2021, we visited Chiwuli community in Kampala suburb with an intention of discovering the way of life of the widows and young girls that are victims of gender-based violence. Chibuli is a highly populated area with a lot of slums that are characterized with alcoholism, poverty, drug abuse, high levels of prostitution, theft, all this and more summing up to higher rate of gender-based violence in Chibuli. We had a talk with an 18-year-old Nyakato that was raped, got pregnant, as a result she was just from home as early as 18 years. She says there are many young girls like her who face some and worse scenarios that actually have no hope and never have justice at all. Moving down into Chikumamutwe village, here we meet widows who shared with us how they are trying to cope up with their status through small-scale business, most especially crafting, though their major challenge is still the raw materials. We then proceeded to PCCP, a community school that supports less privileged children in the community. Now moving to Awire's office, he gave us the whole story about PCC. I am Nixon Wawire, the director of People Concerned Children's Project, just people PCCP. Um, we are located in Chiwuri, Luwuga. So we work with the children, work with the number of children who are disadvantaged. So the organization started mainly in 2006 in April. At first it started as a literacy center, yeah. just helping children how to learn, read, and write. Mm -hmm. Then after all, this, they introduced to be a, as like a small school, to teach children from P1, from baby class to P4. Mm -hmm. So from there when children finish P4, we integrate them to different schools, regular schools. So we started this organization just because due to the increased number of children in slums who are unable to go to school due to lack of school requirements for regular schools, high poverty among, among our parents, then the days of parents due to HIV or AIDS and accidents. Then even also domestic violence was also at an increase. this project, now that COVID has hit, has it affected you in any way? Yeah, but the COVID has affected us so much that he, many children we deal with, they are orphans. Others are from poor families. So in most cases, as you found me here, child comes here, it tells you he has taken two days without food. So we sometimes we try to provide food to them, more so during this COVID situation. We try to solicit food from friends and give them to the children. How do you identify these children? I, uh, I get to think that there are people out there, there are children out there who, uh, who may not know that this is some relief, there is some relief here. How do you reach out to the people to know that in case of anything they can reach out to? Um, mostly some of the children, we find them in the community. Yeah. But others are brought by children who, who joined here. The we find the older children who joined here already. When they find them, their friends in the community who are not studying, they advise them to come here. So on um, several occasions you find children, they come here on their own. Then they tell you different stories, why they are not in school and they are interested in coming to school. So we decide to, to, to make them join the center and we provide the necessities. I appreciate to work with against all odds we are still standing. I think it's going to be important for us. We have many stories, touching stories with children. I wish if you get a chance to meet these children, you'll find that they have a lot of touching stories which you will like to 
to him. So I'm um, wholeheartedly welcoming the PCC to the PCC for Children's School. Generally, in Uganda, most of the young girls and widows are victims of gender-based violence. Although the Protection Against Gender-Based Violence Bill was enacted in 2009, in the recent study conducted by UNHCR in October 2020, it was revealed that 81% of Uganda's women and children are still at high risk of gender-based violence. In terms of sexual exploitation, rape, forced and child marriage, female genital mutilation, as well as intimate partner violence. In some families in Uganda, physical discipline is still accepted as a form of disciplining women and children. It is unfortunate that most of these victims face barriers to access essential health care, psychosocial support, justice and safety. This is because most of the victims are usually poor and they are therefore discriminated and thus have no alternative other than accepting violence. I am Winnie Comfort Akoraje, Operations Manager against all odds still standing in Uganda. I am happy that I have been given a chance to air out my view about gender-based violence in Uganda which has been haunting me for a very long time. Gender-based violence, be it emotional, physical or psychological, is a very satanic act that I believe should be put to an end as long as we have joined hands. I believe that against all odds still standing will put a great milestone towards the end of gender-based violence in Uganda. <laughs>